Okay, hello and welcome back to the uh, Land Rover Toolbox videos. Uh, the slope cylinder, sometimes you can uh, hone out the bore of the cylinder and replace the seal and have a perfect working cylinder again. Now, I've covered reverse bleeding this uh, slave cylinder, and it's on a different video link below. And also, I'll just let you know that some of the adverts are now appearing on the videos are offering parts of relevant suppliers, so that save me a job. Right, this slave cylinder here is absolutely a foobard. Excuse me, I'm not going to use any swear words today. It's rusted, solid, and there's nothing you can do about this because the bore is already pitted, and there's no way of replacing the seals in that. However, what you do is go off and find the relevant slave cylinder for your gearbox, and then replace it. Okay, so this is a bare mark one for the TD5 R380 on the Discovery 2. Um, which fits up in here, and uh, I'm sure that most of you now know what a slave cylinder actually looks like and how it works. All right, so this is the one off the vehicle. It's leaky. Okay, it doesn't look like it's that old, and it has a repair kit, STC2818. Uh, and basically what you get in the repair kit is the seals. Now, a lot of the time, really honestly, seals should be uh, replaced every four years. We usually wait until they fail before we do anything, or if they seize up. Now, basically, with this one, I told you that the bore is pitted and rusty. There's no way of recovering this. On some of them, you can do. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about the TD5. This has a shared reservoir with the brake. And, of course, this here, um, well, you can see that this master cylinder is going to have to possibly be repaired as well. Easy to take off. Undo the clevis pin clip here, knock out the pin, and then you have two bolts on the other side, which you can then undo and take the slave cylinder. Oh, sorry, I mean the master cylinder out. We're not doing that. I'm clamping this off today just to make sure I don't lose any fluid whatsoever. And you'll see on the other end where the slave cylinder was is there's no drips whatsoever. Okay, so here's a random web search and I was looking for a clutch slave cylinder and I found a big list on the Rimmer website. It's not as uh, cut and dried as one fits all because it doesn't and you can see the comprehensive list here of aftermarket OEM and Land Rover parts. Now some of these will be expensive, some not so expensive and there is a very long comprehensive list. Now what you'll do is find the one for your gearbox and engine and if it's the right one um, like ours uh, FTC 5202 R380 gearbox TD5 and that will have a relevant repair kit with that as well. So I'll scroll down a bit more and you can see there are uh, varying numbers and we're looking for um, FDC 5202 repair kit is STC 2818 so it's fairly uh, good for a reference and of course uh, the other ones are listed here along with uh, the shim packers and the push rods which is handy to know and then the clips as well for the push rods depending on what they are and also the defender clutch pedal kit which that's uh, yeah, interesting for some people so what I've found myself is a couple of kits which I've bought. One was £6 and one was £2. And uh, I've got uh, rubber grease, which you only use for brake and uh, rubber components, which are going to be used with a brake fluid. This uh, Renolit rubber grease is red like so. Do not mix brake fluid with any other lubricant other than this stuff, okay? Um, for our job, obviously, we're going to need lashings of a brake and clutch fluid, dot four, which is fresh and been checked, okay? Now, with these, I'll pop that off. Sometimes they do need to be pushed out with a little bit of air. Just be careful, that can hurt, because these come out like bullets, so just give it a quick squeeze. And what we're looking at here is the piston. The piston um, will give a damn good telltale sign whether the uh, thing is worth renovating, because if it's scored and worn badly, um, then we've got problems. Well, you can see the rubber seal there and which direction it goes in. It expands out as it has pressure pushed onto it. Okay, so it shouldn't leak. But we clean this up and have a look to see what scoring we have on the piston. Now, if they're deep scores, forget it. Just bin it and don't look any further. 
Uh, however, this seems to be okay. The shiny side is the thrust side, and where it's been black is what it originally would have been coloured, okay? So, yeah, you could go pedantic and uh, measure it, but it's okay. It's not ovaled. Now, to remove the seal, easy enough, just use a screwdriver and pop it out like so. Remember, when we put the seal in, we do not want to be using screwdrivers at all because they can cut the seal and make it fail. Right, now what we have is the barrel here. Now, this is the important thing. I don't, you can't see into it. Okay, but what you can see is a little bit of corrosion and on the inside I'll put my finger into it and see if there's actually a lip inside which is not and it's not rusted past um, Where it actually stopped working. So that's just moisture corrosion further down. It's okay Right, so what we have here is some honing stones which are 13 millimeters to um, 28 millimeters these are pretty good. They are for honing out brake components, bores on wheel cylinders, master cylinders, okay. Um, these things here are, um, well, they're cheap made if you buy cheap ones. They're sort of like, well, you use them a few times and then they probably break. However, they'll do the job. You know what honing stones are. And uh, you can see this one here uh, hones out cylinder bores, okay, which uh, make them a lot better for the ore to grip onto the cylinder bore. Right, so basically you lubricate the stones and the inside of the bore with brake fluid. Do not use oil, okay. We only use brake fluid as a lubricant here. We don't want any residues of any other mineral or synthetic oil in there. Okay, so basically it is just honing this out until we get a, a smooth bore. As I say, if it's got a lip in there, it'd be no good. And I'll just clean this out with air, away from the camera and from eyes. And basically I'm feeling to see how smooth it is inside that bore. And it actually looks pretty good. I will say here that this doesn't always work replacing seals because if you have a lip inside the bore it, the chances are that the seal won't hold properly but honing doesn't remove any metal it just uh, roughs up the surface and makes it a, a decent enough area for the seal to work. Now I'm just using a brake cleaner to clean out like I said don't use anything else a spirits or white cleaner or anything like that. I will just get rid of the dirty brake cleaner into a different container. Now, if you don't have air, use a clean rag that is lint free, i.e. it doesn't leave anything behind once it's white. And you can clean the bore out like so, or use the old fashioned engineer's thing of using air to blow it out. Now I'll just show you, you can see the bore is uh, actually quite nice. There's a dark area where the corrosion was, but it should be good to go. Now, like I say, this isn't 100% effective, but if the bore is in good nick, then we shouldn't have an issue. It's a bit of a suck it and see, but it quite often works as a cheap repair. Now, the seal goes on with a lipped edge um, towards the inside. I'm using a little bit of rubber grease as lubrication to make sure it doesn't tear the seal in any way. And a little bit of uh, rubber grease in there with the spring. You don't need much at all. It's just a lubrication to get it in there and uh, fiddle it in without bending the seal a lip. Okay, so now she's in. All right, and that is basically um, very smooth backwards and forwards. I can't feel anything binding on it. So the top cap. This is how you do it. You turn it inside out. You push the top in and put the edges over. And there you have it, you have a reconditioned slave cylinder. Change the bleed nipple if it's rotten. Okay, so comparison here, here's the bear mark one. This one's been machined, it looks engineered okay. And this one hasn't been machined, and I'm pretty sure this is an aftermarket one as well. However, they look exactly the same. Do not be fooled by the sizes of them because the bores can be different. Okay, so you can see here, one has actually got a Lockheed um, on the outer dust cap seal. And you can see that here, so I'm actually quite convinced that the Bearmark kit that I used is uh, original or OEM. Now, getting back to this one, um, somebody put some rubber grease in there a while ago, so it has been overhauled, I'm pretty sure of that. But I'm going to have to pop the clip out. 
and get this done. You can also overhaul master cylinders and uh, replace the rubbers where the reservoirs fit in if you get the right kit. So this is just a little bit of an insight here for you.